I'm Sean Arnold from Brave in the Attempt, sharing a previously recorded webinar. We're exploring using Microsoft Teams to help staff communicate and collaborate. If you are just coming in, check out the bit.ly links on the bottom. They're pasted in the chat. Uh, my name is Sean Arnold. Uh, there's some of my contact info. There is that Teams basics for the agenda. Again, I work in the District 75 uh, I work in District 75. I am a special educator and STEM coach. Uh, within that chat, just for the sake of it, I want you guys to relax and calm down. I know it's probably been stressful on the second day, so many things going on. I was helping moderate a team-specific one for related service providers a moment ago that had something like 400 related service providers providers trying to pop in. I know that's one of the big challenges, especially for paraprofessionals, related service providers, administrators finding their place in the midst of all of this. Feel free, though, to place some uh, conference call bingo as you go. That's linked there in the agenda. But let's forge ahead. The whole point of this is we need to consider uh, the global connections of our students, right? It's a big world, lots of people living with disabilities. And we also understand that there's a broad range of them. I'm not gonna get into all the accessibility features that Microsoft offers. It's a lot, they're great, they're pretty, they're awesome, uh, but that's not what this session is specifically about. If you wanna reach out to me about those, I'm happy to share more information. I've linked some of that in the agenda if you wanna dig deeper. But to that point, um, especially in my district, in District 75, uh, communication is a challenge, not only because our students have uh, communicative disabilities, uh, but because we are such a broad and spread out district. And even one school in our district might be 12 sites, and some exist in various locations apart different schools, and they have uh, individual sites and locations all to themselves. So communicating across all of that stretch has been a challenge in the best of times. But one thing that helps is the ways that we are able to use these technologies now to connect and communicate and collaborate together. And Teams is an awesome platform for that. It also plays very well with all the other platforms. So as you're hearing about Google Classroom, Edpuzzle, Flipgrid, all these other things, they synchronously work very, very well inside of Microsoft Teams. Uh, and there are tons of accessibility features to enhance that all the more. Let's just give a little overview. So when you log into your DOE email or anywhere else, you're gonna see all those funky apps like Outlook and all the rest. There is a link there for Teams. I know I'm not doing this inside of Teams and there's a reason for that. Uh, there's several reasons for that, but part of it is because I want you guys to be able to see everything I'm doing in Teams. And when I go ahead and share with you, it might hide a few things that you won't be able to see. So this way I wanna make sure you guys see everything I'm doing inside of Teams. Uh, so inside of Teams, uh, that app, yes, you can click on it. It'll ask you if, say, you're in a Chrome browser, if you wanna open it up on the web. Uh, but otherwise, you can go ahead and use it uh, through the app. And that's honestly the recommended way. So if you download the app, to your system, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that right now. If I go ahead and I log into my DOE account, portal.office.com, now I'm in a Safari browser, and it's not gonna actually work on the web in a Safari browser, and I'm glad for that on purpose, but it does this if you're on another browser too. I will go ahead and click and find my Teams app. There we go. And it asks me, do I want to open it in the web, but I don't have that option here, or do I want to download the app? There you go. And if I click on that, I can download the Teams app. It's also available on iPads, it's also available on Android and iPhones, so it works across things. And for you who are service providers and other people who are trying to connect to paraprofessionals or anybody else who doesn't have full access and is simply just using a regular old cell phone, you can call them into meetings, you can go ahead and, and phone dial them individually if all they got uh, not even a smartphone, but just some regular cell phone, okay? Cool, cool, cool. All right, couple of things. Uh, step one, create a team, decide on the nature of the team, blah, 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 and then add your people, all right? I'm gonna walk you through each of these in a second. I just wanna give you a visualization and an overview first, just so you don't 
get overwhelmed when I start clicking buttons, right, for our uh, different learning needs. So again, that's make your team, put in the details of the type of team, go ahead and add your members, and then you can just start adding content to various channels, and we'll talk about the details of that, all sorts of applications, begin having conversations, begin working with your peers, and whatever kind of team scheduling, meeting together, right? So I'm gonna hop on in and to Teams itself. I'll hit my Teams app, and this is it installed on my computer in the app. Like I said, you can run it from the web, but the app version works better. Uh, and I made sure I turned off all these notifications in it, so all these other people trying to message me right now should not pop up while I'm doing this, gladly. And if you want to ask me at the end, give me a moment how I turn off those settings, I'll let you know. So here I am. I can have all these teams available to me. I'm a member of that and many, many more, too many more. But if I wanted to get started, I can go ahead and simply hit at the top of the screen this button that says join or create team. Let me move this off screen. Boom. And from there, Simply find a team that already exists that you might, uh, for example, the Queen's South Ed Tech program. But I'm gonna make one from scratch. Let's see, what kind do I want? Well, we're not gonna do a class one right now, but that's a really good one for a learning space for students. It allows for group projects. It allows for a student notebook where they can submit work to the teacher and everything. Again, that's not what we're focused on now. We're focused on staff ones. For, oops. I didn't mean to hit that. Uh, professional learning community is a nice open group where it's a communication among educators themselves. If we're doing administration and pushing out stuff, you'll probably want to do the staff one. It's all up to you. For now, I will click that staff one. It's just, they'll all work the same. And it, don't worry if you feel like you selected the wrong one at first. Don't, if it's for staff, don't click the student ones. But the other two don't matter as much. It's just a matter of, uh, exactly what kind of tools they start you off with, but you can always add some of those later. So I'm gonna give this team a name. We're gonna call this the D75 test team. All right, hmm, who do I want in this group? Do I want it to be public? Well, what's good about that is if I have a whole bunch of people that I might want to be able to join this and just have a conversation here, and it doesn't mean anyone per se, it mostly just means within the Department of Education. I can just share that link and I don't have to sit there and click and uh, approve everybody and type in everybody's name individually. Private simply means only the team uh, owners, and that can be multiple team owners, it doesn't have to just be you who sets it up, can go ahead and add the members. Now if you've already created groups or set up a group the way you want, a team the way you want, excuse me, you can go ahead and use, use one of these bottom buttons, which might be hard for you to see, but it just basically says import a group or use an existing template. So I can go ahead and create this team. Uh, who do I want on this team? Well, because I like these people and they're my friends and I work with them, I can go ahead and add Gregory Heath. I can go ahead and add Sarai. If you've got full on groups, you can type the names of those groups in there and it would have added as well. But I'm just gonna add those two just so I don't bother too many people in the midst of this. And I can decide if I want one of them, like Sarai, to be an owner of this team. Cool. Let's close that out. Here's my team as it exists. Let me move this up so you guys can see it better on the bottom of the screen. All right. So this here uh, at the top basically is my stream where I see everything. So you who are accustomed to Google Classroom, this sort of exists like that stream. Here on the side, is all this other sorts of information that I can get to. I'll get to there later, don't stress about that. And these are where I find my channels. So let's just start here. In this stream, I can go ahead and start a conversation. Hello, what's up? I can go ahead and throw in cute gifts of all the toilet paper we wish we had in our houses. I can go ahead and add little polls using Polly and all sorts of other things. We're not gonna worry about that now, but one that we do wanna connect with is this button here, and I hope you guys can see me zooming in on it. Maybe somebody give me a thumbs up on that if you can, hopefully, when I zoom. Yep, cool, good. 
I hope that's helpful. I'm not sure if it shares properly. So that little button is what takes us to these sort of Teams meetings that you've probably been most familiar with in Teams, all right? Those team meetings are uh, those video calls. And it doesn't have to be just video calls. They can be audio-only calls as well. I could start one up right now, add a subject. Let's call this test meeting. I can schedule it. I'm going to go ahead and mute people in the background. If you need to ask me a question or ask something, feel free to unmute yourself. I'm just muting everybody. Try to keep yourself muted uh, if you can, if you're not asking a question, just for courtesy's sake. Scheduling it is worthwhile because I can suddenly add my other attendees, all these people that I want to come to the meeting, schedule it maybe for tomorrow afternoon so we can have a chat together and see how things went for our day. Here's an important point to make though. I'm gonna show you one other way, and actually two other ways to schedule these sorts of meetings, and you gotta decide which version is best for you. In a team meeting that I'm setting up like this, people who are not members of the team can go ahead and attend. It's fine. Uh, oops, what did I do wrong? Hello. Send. Oh, dismiss. All right, let's try another one. I don't know why that didn't work. Test, schedule a meeting. Uh, you can also add optional attendees. Let's make Greg optional. And Sarai. Boom. If this is a daily meeting, again, we can make it repeat with custom settings. Hey, we're going to have it repeat every day. And it's going to end on April 8th, hopefully when uh, spring break occurs. We won't have to stress about all of this as much anymore. And now I can send that out. Eh. Well, so I'm going to go to another team and do this because something's going wonky in this team. Let's go to D75 Digital Classroom. Here we go. Let's start this one up. Test. Maybe it's simply that Teams is overwhelmed because we're having a 1,000 meetings at a time for everybody who's in here. There we go and send. Sweet, that one worked. Now here's the details. Now that I've created that meeting that's gonna exist on whatever that given day is, I can pop in, back into it and view those meeting details. If I haven't sent it to somebody, if I wanna post it somewhere, hey, here's that call-in information. If I go ahead and copy this link, I can paste this somewhere the way we have done in our spreadsheets so you guys can attend these meetings. And so anybody else can go ahead and attend these. It doesn't mean just the members of the team. Uh, it does max out at 250 people, so that's why that related service providers meeting earlier today was uh, getting a lot of headaches because a lot more than 250 tried to check into it. But that's how that works. There are some glitchy issues and with those sorts of meetings. For example, uh, the video chat features uh, only work for people who are members of the team. They won't work great for people who are uh, simply uh, calling in from a phone or using it on a phone. It doesn't work perfectly in every app. But I will show a couple of things that'll happen if you're in a live meeting like this. From one of these, if I want to invite somebody else, I can simply type in their name, try to find their email. Or if I want to, I can even type in a phone number. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And call it. But we're going to cancel that phone call because I don't want to bother that person. All right. And you can call individual phone numbers. So that's a good way for you to use it with parents. Uh, if you want to make uh, phone calls, not from your own uh, personal cell phone or number. These obviously turn your cameras on and off, mute everything, let you share your screen in the way that I'm doing now. So you can share individual whole screens or individual windows or any uh, work that you've been doing. I wanna say one of these here is a Microsoft whiteboard, and because you're not part of this team, you're not gonna be uh, editing on this, but what it does allow us to do inside this whiteboard, it's a very simplistic one. It's not as cool as Smart Notebook Online or Classflow or any of that, but it does allow some basic writing, and it's collaborative. So anybody else here in this team in this meeting can be writing on there, and we could be mapping out some stuff together. We could drag some pictures on there. And, and be working in a collaborative space. 
Can you invite any email address or it has to be a Microsoft Office one? Nope, it doesn't. It can be a Gmail, right? Uh, so people can join from Gmail. People can join from a phone number. They don't have to be even a DOE person to pop into these. It's totally fine. Now, I will say people joining as guests from those others won't have full access to everything, right? Just like they wouldn't have full access from membership of the team, so they can't go ahead and edit all the documents and things like that. But uh, let's go ahead, and I'm going to go to two other important actions. Here's that conversation where we can continue having a chat. This is a show participants button. That's important, which is where I showed you how I was inviting people. But if there were more people in this meeting, I could actually mute other people. Now, you can't unmute other people <laughs> for the sake of privacy, but you can <laughs> mute the whole group. <laughs> Yo, the chat is live. Oh, I'm not even seeing what's going on. Isn't this dive into class dojo? All right. Ooh, interesting. I'll take a peek at that chat in a moment. I appreciate that. But you can go ahead and put in all that information here and mute people as you need. It gets okay. a little crazy sometimes in web meetings. Sean, I'm just going to interrupt yeah, for ahead. one second. I think sure. that um, some people are looking for dive into class dojo. Oh. Did that no, get no, no. changed? This, this session got shifted because this was asked for more. Sorry. Um, so that's there is the a issue. recording for Class Dojo one, a previous one we did, and we will be holding future Class Dojo ones as well. But this one is specifically for Microsoft Teams. So um, there's a link to a website, the Bitly spreadsheet that that <clears throat> that we have that Sean had created. I believe I posted that in the chat, and you yeah, can find I that. I think that the problem is that yesterday, um, just the list of we, not from us, but from um, some of the higher ups in the in the DOE in District Seventy Five had sent out a list of all the workshops that were going to happen, and so that's why you might not see that it changed. It's always better to go to that Bitly that live link. Yeah. Yes, that's all. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for that. Yeah, that live link is the story, and that's all your that principal. That'll have the needs. most up to you date. You don't need the list ahead. You just need that Bitly, and it'll always show you the mm -hmm. most up to date. Right there in the front of the D Seventy Five them site or that bit.ly link that'll get you there all right thank you liz okay so here we are i was sharing in the screen i got to those people in the chat one other last piece is i can go ahead and uh record my session now if you're recording your session which we're recording these so people who want to see it after the fact who couldn't attend live can get all that information that's great um, the recording won't end until you first obviously hit stop recording, but also until everybody is hung up from the meeting, okay? And then you'll be able to, inside the team, get access to that recording. I'll show you what one of those looks like. I will go to another team where we have had recorded sessions. Oops, that is not it. This is it. So a session like this that, uh, let me scroll up. And smart learning suite team meeting, I can go ahead and look throughout these replies and all that extended chat. And I can see that the meeting was recorded and I can go ahead and get a link to that to share out with people who weren't able to attend. All right? So that's one way to have one of those uh, web meetings. There are two other key ways. I'm gonna go over here to the side and I'm getting out of Teams. Let's not confuse Teams and chat. Chat is just for like, regular conversations, it's not a big collaboration hub, it's just a communication space. So I can start up a new chat, and since I know that she's here, I'm gonna reach out to, actually, let's just type the actual email address, Miss Tierney, right? And we've got things we've been chatting out. I'm gonna put somebody else in there too, Greg Heath. We can have multiple people in this chat, and I can just let them know, hey guys, I'm in a training. And from there, I can also, at the top here, suddenly start a video phone call with them. Don't feel the need to answer, Liz. And it has all those same features. Oops, let's get out of that. And then the third method for creating those is inside this calendar on the side. All right, Oops, hang that up. Inside the calendar, I can go ahead and schedule a 
various meetings, although here at the top, they're scheduling a meeting or a live event. Here's where the difference lay. In a live event, uh, it's really awesome in that I can have way more attendees, so maybe for those future related service provider sessions, we'll end up as a live event because I think we can have somewhere in the neighborhood of like 10,000 attendees instead of only 250. That should be enough. But it also allows um, everybody to have the chat function working well for them, anybody to be able to get in there. What it doesn't allow though is for everybody to chat back. So if you wanna have a conversation about something, that is not the space to go. A live event is more about a one-way presentation, okay? So let's hop back into our team, that weird, fakey little team that I just made. And yes, here's a stream, lots of interesting stuff going on there. Let's respond with emojis. So that way, better than an email, I don't have to reply, I got it, this is good. Everybody's had those reply all chains that they hated and got annoyed with. This doesn't have to be that. We can just give a thumbs up. That means I saw it. That means I read it. That means I think this is good. Great. Easier responses. How Let's do go. I use this to um, make phone calls? Like I need yeah. to get in contact with parents? Well, as I showed you before, you can create those meetings and dial somebody directly from a phone number. Or even from this calls area on the side, I can go ahead and just add a call, a speed dial, and type in the phone number there directly. So yes, you can use it to dial phone numbers as well. Thank like you. Sure. Yes, it connects with emails or phone numbers. Either are fine. Obviously, if they're calling from phone, they won't see any screen sharing and stuff like that, clearly. But they can hear you just fine. And they won't see your phone number. All right, so here we are in the team. This side part is actually fairly important. This allows us to do multiple things, manage the channel, uh, set up other channels. Here's what we're going to first. Let's add some channels. For clarification, what a channel is, uh, let's say that this is six to one to one classes. Oh, sorry, I can't do colons. I gotta do dashes, I forgot. And in here, I can say, hey, everybody on the team can go ahead and put information and share stuff there, or maybe it's private and only certain people on the team can access it. And I only want Greg, because I'm saying he's a six to one to one expert and whatever other people I want, they're the only ones that have access to this specific group, which has all its own chat, all its own situations, all its own things that they can do. So that's what channels are about. It's about creating subgroups that are doing their own work. For example, even at the district office STEM team, we have sub channels created for our work specifically for the STEM fair or created for Lego league and other such things. Now here at the top, all these different sections are what allow for the collaboration piece inside the team. Yes, we're able to communicate in those various ways, but this collaboration piece is what makes it really cool. So I can go ahead, I can share files in here of a number of types, uh, yes, documents, but I could share links to websites. I could share Google Docs. It's fine, they play nicely with everything else. I'm just gonna suddenly start a brand new Word document though. Um, and hit create. Now there's nobody else in here with me because this is my super, super lonely fake team, but I can begin typing here. I can have other people collaborating and working and we're working on a project together. Anybody else in this team has access to it. I can even simultaneously pop open this conversation on the time on the side and say, remember to finish your uh, prologue, sure. And that will give access to uh, the other people in my document. I can even go into all the accessibility features. So I'm gonna actually copy and paste some text from somewhere else just because since we're doing a special ed specifically focused one, I want you guys to see a little bit of what's available for the Microsoft Accessibility Features. We're gonna show you something from, uh, called Microsoft Learning Tools. Also, one portion of Learning Tools is Immersive Reader. Okay, let's just copy and paste, whatever it is. There you go. Just some random text in British English. What I'm going to do is click up on this button that says View at the top, up on View, 
I'm going to go ahead and now click on this thing called Immersive Reader. And suddenly, my screen magically turns into this space where it's a lot e more easily readable for kids. I'm going to take out my headphones so you can hear this. Oh, turn this up. And utilize the experience that Alt has of running the Alt Online Winter Conference. We have put. All right. If I want to, I can change those voices and the speed. The reason you see all these dots and things is because I've already chosen to break it down by syllables. And I've chosen Comic Sans font specifically because that's really good for students with dyslexia or dysgraphia. Um, you can even put it light text on a dark background, which improves student retention of information. And we have, here's the most amazing part, because there are a lot of adults here who as well have uh, dyslexia and dysgraphia, so that's helpful for them. We can break it down by parts of speech. Uh, here's a good one. If pe students who need to sound it out, so we can hear. Key. E. We. Or this A says. It. Ah. Versus this A, which is. Great. A. Pages. A. And this is going to be the moment that all you uh, District 75 and special education specific folks are going to get really excited. Not this one. Yes, focus on a line at a time while it reads to me. But this one, uh, oops, undo that. I can translate it. I'm going to do it to Portuguese because that's one that I know. And I'm going to do it by the whole document. Okay, so I can see it in its original. I can see it in Portuguese. Yep, it can speak it to me. Actually, I'm going to pull this out so you can hear it spoken in Portuguese. 2020, Pretty good accent. And translation is actually uh, really, really accurate, more so than uh, my uh, Google Translate, because this is contextual rather than word-based. But let's go ahead and look at stuff in the picture dictionary. I don't know. Oh, look, I have picture symbols automatically embedded in there. That's right there, powered by the picture dictionary. So that's just some of the few awesome features that are available in the docs. We're not going to go deep dive into that, but this is shared and we can collaborate together, us together inside of our team, working on those documents together. I can upload stuff, share them. I can even add, and that's, let me show you exactly what I did again, clicking this plus button at the top. Uh, boom. I can add all sorts of other apps. So if I want to create a link, like I've done in some of our teams, to this D75 STEM website, or any other sort of document, like a Google Doc or anything else, I can suddenly add that and boom, here is that STEM website here with all the updated trainings. I promise you it was supposed to be Microsoft Teams right now. Uh, and this is always up to date as well as information on a load of other things, our PD catalog, newsletters, et cetera. Cool, cool, cool. So that's uh, the little gist of inside of this team, all the fun festive things we can do inside of here. I do <laughs> want... All right, go ahead. If I want to show them a piece of a uh, IEP from CSIS, what would be the best way to pull that up on the screen for them? So, all right, two places. Yes, you can obviously link to the CSIS website, but everybody's going to have to log in to their own accounts in there uh, to view it. Uh, separately, it's your best practices. I don't know who's in your team and who is allowed access to that IEP, but if we're assuming that everybody in there is allowed to see this IEP. You can uh, go ahead and uh, share, uh, what was I going to say, screenshots of it itself. Although I will say, as a general rule, one of the best practices when we're working especially in CSIS, because it always like logs us out and bumps us out, um, is to finish your, your comments and all the things you're going to be putting in your IEP into a Microsoft Word document first, and then you can copy it over into CSIS. Uh, that way you're not going to have all those glitchy issues where it logs you off and logs you off again and again. So a lot of times completing that information in a document. If uh, I guess I could try to 
uh, share some of the templates I have for CSIS documents later on. I don't know if I have those linked in the agenda, but I'll make sure I get those on in the next couple of days. So if you head back over I, there, there should I be. think they may be thinking about doing an IEP meeting with either other oh. staff or with the parents. I think that's what they're thinking of. Oh, yeah, you right? can you can do those video chat call meetings. And I will say, um, yes, Microsoft Teams and everything we're doing in here is COPPA and FERPA compliant for students. And also with the changing guidelines for HIPAA, uh, for service providers and whatnot, it is HIPAA compliant as well, uh, as well as so is Google Meet now, because they have in the midst of this whole uh, thing that we're going through, uh, changed those, uh, uh, HIPAA guidelines enough so that you can use these not intensely secure platforms, but it's still secure enough to provide. Hey, Sean, real quick, um, yeah, if, you create, if you create a team, mm -hmm. um, can you give another colleague uh, um, ownership, like co-ownership over that team? There can be the multiple owners of a team, yeah. and I'm going to. And how do you do now. that? All Thank right. You. Here we go. Thank you. That was a perfect segue because that's right exactly what I was sort of. Um, going can, I, can we just go finish ahead. with the IEP thing? Because oh yeah, no, uh, go ahead. Do so not answer that one? yes, if you call the parent, you can share your screen because some they wrote it into the chat too. Oh so, okay. So yes. as I was sharing before, maybe maybe joined late. Yes, you can go to this meeting. Um, yes, you can share your screen while you're on CSIS. Uh, yes, you can even. Uh, email that parent's personal email. It doesn't have to be a DOE one. Now, if you do have that parent joining by phone and you're typing a phone number instead, obviously they're not going to be able to see your screen, right? Because uh, they're just calling in. Uh, so that you will be able to have a conversation about it. Um, that will not allow if you're calling by phone number for them to, to view what's on your screen. That should be noted. All right, all right, dismiss that. So as to the next question, I'm looking at this. Uh, if we need to, I'll, I'm saving time for some questions. I'll get into some immersive reader stuff more later. It works across tons of platforms. So here we go. On this side, I'm hitting this stuff. This is where I can add channels. This is where I can add more members if I want. I can edit the details of the team, like its name and stuff. I can get a link. To the team so if you're just trying to copy and paste to help people get into it and join it that's one way to do it but i'm going to go into manage team and inside of manage team is where i can go ahead and if i decide i don't want sarai to be an owner i'll put her back to being a member maybe instead i'm liking greg better today and i'm going to go ahead and make him an owner so you can have multiple owners you can't even change these settings and this is important about especially about member and guest permissions so if this is a team that's geared towards let's say an administrative heavy team that simply wants information going mostly one way i would argue that's not best case scenario of what you should have for your organization but maybe just this one team is set up that way all right because this is a one-way informational space i can go ahead and unallow all these sorts of things. So if I don't want the members of my team to be able to add channels or to upload all these extra apps or to edit messages and stuff, I can go ahead and uncheck every single one of those things. If I think I want it super professional and I don't want people to be able to add those gifts or those fun memes and things, although why would you be so mean, Young Kevin? You can block those things as well, okay? So that's simply by going into manage team, these three dots, it looks like a kebab on the side. I did explain the chat. It's just an ongoing chat space as well. Um, one other specific piece of Teams, though, that I did want to share is simply, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, but this call space is for just one-off sorts of calls. So I can go ahead and type in a name, or I can add in a phone number to speed dial. So if I knew somebody's particular phone number, I could type it in there and suddenly go ahead and dial that parent, boom, and call them in that way and have them as a regular contact uh, for those sorts of parent meetings. I do wanna show one last little piece here. Where did that other window go? Let's say I'm just starting with, with one uh, feature and let's get Greg in there again, just so it's not our messages between each other. I don't think we did anything unprofessional, but just for the sake of it. <laughs> 
I can go ahead and start one of those screen shares, or if I just want it to be phone call, or let's just say video chat for the sake of argument. And up here, I can suddenly start inviting more people and dialing their numbers individually, as many as I want in, in these chats, up to uh, 250 people for video chats. You can, and I'm just gonna mention at this point, I'm not digging deeply into it, you can schedule classes in Teams uh, using things like OneNote where you can share and make. This was specifically guided towards uh, uh, teachers and staff together, but that allows something like this class notebook with tons of accessibility features in there, uh, voice, uh, speech to text, as well as voice recordings. Um, you're able to distribute and collect assignments. Similarly, even in staff teams, and I will hop to one, like the digital classroom one, I can go ahead and go ahead and set up a sort of planner in here. And this planner functions for our team to stay on track of their tasks and goals. Uh, we're gonna create a new plan, do stuff. And this is the space where uh, an administrator can go ahead and add tasks and set due dates for their staff so that they can all stay on track and know, especially across the wide range of places where we're spread hitherto right now, of, hey, make sure you, I know it's busy and I know asynchronously you're playing with your kids or, or dealing with your baby girl at you know, maybe one in the afternoon. So make sure at least though by this date you get this particular task done. So that's a really good piece in there is that planner. Uh, it's, it's similar to the assignment feature for students, but for, for, for uh, staff and adults, it's called a planner. Otherwise, take care of yourself, spend time uh, getting energy, try to get uh, walking around and moving as much as you can and uh, enjoy yourselves and the rest of your day. Bye guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.